because continuous functions and limits of functions are so intimately tied together and functional limits are so intimately tied together with limits of sequences the following theorem doesn't even deserve a proof theorem let f comma g from a to r be functions functions that are continuous continuous at x in a then number one f plus g is continuous at x number two i will i will write f plus or minus then fg is continuous at x number three cf is continuous at x where c is a real number then number four f by g is continuous at x provided provided g is not equal to zero on a of course the last thing can be finessed and a better version be made but i am not going to bother doing it so this theorem just follows immediately from all the theory that we have so far developed okay now suppose i were to ask you look at the function square root of 3x squared plus 5 is this function continuous is this function continuous first of all what is the domain of the function the domain of the function is the whole of the real numbers it's the whole of the real numbers because there's an x squared that that uh, in term inside the square root will never be zero it will be well defined we already know that because of this previous algebraic uh, theorem where sums products etc of continuous functions is continuous 3x squared plus 5 will be continuous and we also know that square root will be continuous because that's what we proved in an earlier module but we cannot combine these two in any simple way to show that root of 3x squared plus 5 is continuous just by using this algebraic theorem well no problem i will just prove what is needed let f from a to r and g from b to r b functions b functions with f of a a subset of b okay if f is continuous at x in a and g is continuous g is continuous at f of x which is an element of b then g composed with f which is a function from a to r is continuous is continuous at the point x okay proof proof this proof is best done using open balls around the point that we are interested in let epsilon greater than 0 and consider consider the open ball b g composed with f of x epsilon okay now by the various characterizations of continuity that we have seen along with properties of limits it's sufficient to show it is sufficient to show to show that we can find we can find delta greater than 0 satisfying f of b x delta is fully contained in not f of sorry about that g composed with f is fully contained in 
b g o f x epsilon if we can do this then we are done then we are done okay how does one do this well we can find we can find delta 1 such that g of b f of x delta is a subset of b g of f x epsilon why can we do this because because g is continuous at f of x is continuous at f of x right now we can find delta 2 we can find rather i'll just call it delta we can find delta greater than 0 such that f of b x delta is fully contained in b of f of x delta because f is continuous as f is continuous at x putting 2 and 2 together we get 4 which is what we want uh, g of f of b x delta is contained in g of b f of x delta which is contained in b of g circle f x epsilon this is uh, just one moment this is delta 1 these are all delta 1 okay so this completes the proof this completes the proof so this was fairly easy when we used open balls so the moral of the story is we always try to characterize a definition in as many different forms as possible this is, this is because given any situation you need to use the right tool for the job when all you have in your hand is a hammer everything starts to look like a nail but you would wish to have a saw a screwdriver a spanner and so on so we have characterized continuity in several different ways use the characterizations wisely this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched a module on operations on continuous functions.